Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to another collection update as we start 2023. I thought I would go through my Kino Lorber collection because I have added quite a lot of titles since the last time I did this several years ago. Kino Lorber are so underrated um, pretty much because you know lots of the films they release in Blu-ray are perhaps a little bit lesser known but they are doing really good work with 4K now that I am 4K okay um, even though it's probably just as well that they don't ship internationally because during their sales where their Blu-rays are down to like five dollars and things like that I would probably do a lot of damage um, so it is probably a good thing that they don't ship internationally um, I tend to do all of my Kino Lorber shopping via eBay and you can find some at um, fairly cheap prices. They're not really that expensive on eBay because again there's quite a lot of obscure titles but you're always in for something of interest especially if you're into film noir or westerns or kind of more obscure little films um, but they also do you know they've got quite a lot of French films for example that I've never heard of at the time but they're always worth um, a good go to try it out and again they're not really that expensive so um, there's not too many that I've been disappointed with so I'm just going to go through them I won't talk too much about them because I do actually have quite a lot of them and another thing I like about Kino Lorber is there are the cases are very thin so they don't actually take up as much shelf space as others um, so we'll start with Alias Nick Beale which is a wonderful little um, John Farrow film with Ray Milland and Norman Mitchell and um, Norman Mitchell is fed up with the corruption in the city um, and he would do anything to help clean it up and Ray Milland appears and seems to be able to help him with his purpose um, and manipulate people um, like I did a random review of this it's a wonderful little film from 1949 um, I will go through the special features in each of them just to give you an idea of the kind of um, almost random nature of the extras on Kinos so this one's got a commentary by Eddie Muller who does wonderful work with the Film Noir Foundation um, and a trailer so I'd highly recommend Alice Nick Beale because um, that one is a lot of fun and then you have one of the I think the only two Douglas Sirk films that I have um, this is All I Desire with Barbara Stanwyck um, this has a commentary by Imogen Sarah Smith and a trailer this one's from 1953 and it's wonderful but I do like some Barbara Stanwyck and um, they do have some modern films mixed in of course they are kind of a, a mixed bag of titles so this is where you can get Yorgos Lanthimos's Alps on Blu-ray um, this one has a commentary by film historian Amy Simmons and a trailer um, I do love Alps by Lanthimos. Next is a French film, A Pain in the Ass, or Le Emerdure. This was remade by Billy Wilder as Buddy Buddy, Billy Wilder's last film in 1981. This is from 1973, starring Lena Ventura, the wonderful Lena Ventura and Jack Brell. Um, this is only 85 minutes. Um, Buddy Buddy was longer and it felt longer. This is the the better film as much as I love Billy Wilder and Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. Um, this has a commentary by Nick Pinkerton and a trailer but this one is absolutely wonderful. So that's an example of 
the French films that they do. And speaking of Billy Wilder, this is Avante, which is available elsewhere, um, with Jack Lemmon and Julie Mills. This is Billy Wilder, 1972, in his films that are a little bit too long stage. I mean, this is 140 minutes. There's no way a young Billy Wilder would make it this long. Um, it's still got a lot to recommend it, but it's not one of his best. This is got an interview with Juliet Mills, an interview with Clive Revel, and a trailer. Then we have Barquero, which is a wonderful little western with Lee Van Cleef in War and Oats. And from 1970, this one has absolutely no extras. Um, but I mean, you've got Lee Van Cleef and War and Oats. What more do you need? Um, speaking of westerns, is Bend of the River, a wonderful James Stewart, Anthony Mann film um, with Arthur Kennedy, young Rock Hudson. Um, this is from 1952. This is a commentary by film historian Toby Roan and a trailer. Then we have Bluebeard's Eighth Wife by Lubitsch, which is coming to Eureka um, in the UK. Claudette Colbert and Gary Cooper from 1938. Yes, Gary Cooper does comedy and he's actually pretty good in it. Um, this isn't perhaps top-notch Lubitsch, but it's not far off. Um, really enjoyable. Um, and it's also got an appearance by David Niven. Bluebeard. Um, Claude Chabrol, about the famous um, murderer of women in France. Um, this is a 4K restoration. It's got a commentary of a cat Ellinger. Um, it might not be completely um, successful, but it's a lot of fun. Then we have Blue Panther, also by Chabrol. This is his um, spy film that doesn't quite work but it's also a hell of a lot of fun um, I mentioned this in my Joseph Losey um, Modesty Blaze video uh, this is from 1965 this is a 4k restoration as well and this is a commentary by Howard Berger, Steve Mitchell and Nathaniel Thompson and trailers Buffet Foire, another French film by Bertrand Blier um, sorry, Gérard Depardieu um, this one has an archival interview with Bernard Blier and a commentary by Nick Picker Pinkerton and again some of the Kino Lorbers have booklets, some of them don't and um, this one does have a booklet this is a wonderful black absurdist comedy that you're probably either going to like or not so much then we have Burnt Offerings, which is also available in Arrow, I believe, um, from 1976, um, with Oliver Reed and Karen Black, Burgess Meredith. Um, this has an interview with Anthony Jones, an interview with the screenwriter, an interview with Lee Montgomery. This has two commentaries, one by director, co-writer Dan Curtis, actress Karen Black, and co-writer William Nolan, um, a commentary by film historian Richard Harlan Smith and there's a trailer from Hell there's an animated montage of images and a trailer so again some releases have a ton of stuff some don't and then two that I really enjoy um, Carol Lombard Collection 1 um, which has Fast and Loose Man of the World and No Man of Her Own which are all Wonderful. These are 1930, 31 and 32. And Carol Lombard Collection 2. Hopefully there's a Collection 3 at some point. This is probably the better um, selection of films. This is Hands Across the Table from 1935 with Fred McMurray. Um, Love Before Breakfast in 1936 with Cesar Romero, amongst other people. And The Princess Comes Across with Fred McMurray, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, so I would obviously highly recommend the two Carol Lombard collections. But I am obviously biased. to have an Ido Lupino collection that I would quite like to pick up as well at some point. 
Um, and a, something completely different, CB4, Tamara Davis, wonderful spoof of the rap game. This one has a commentary by Alexandra Heller Nicholas and Josh Nelson. Um, and it has the video straight out of Lokash, um, which is also a little interview with Tamara Davis and co-writer Nelson George. Um, CB4 does have the greatest sex scene in the history of cinema. Then a Tallulah Bankhead film, again something completely different, so you can kind of see even within my collection there's some some shifts in the kind of films that Kino will release. This is The Cheat from 1931, this is a commentary by Simon Abrams. Um, this is actually a wonderful little film that has a running time of a whole 68 minutes. Um, then we have The Champagne Murders, another Cloud Chabrol, um, from 1967 with Anthony Perkins. This has got a commentary by Howard S. Baker and Nathaniel Thompson, A Trail from Hell with Tim Hunter and a trailer, because I always like to get as much Chabrol as possible I can on Blu-ray. Then we have The Children's Hour which I recently did a video on with Audrey Hepburn, Shirley MacLaine and James Garner. This is from 1961, um, about two school teachers that are kind of um, get accused of being lesbians and the effect of that on them and um, one of their relationships with James Garner. It's all caused by a rather spiteful child um, who is one of the most annoying children um, in cinema history. But this is again another example, absolutely no extras in this one. James Woods and Cop, one of James Woods' best performances, really sleazy. Um, Dubly Nazarin Prod recently did a review of this. One of the highlights of the video age, this is from 1988. And this is a commentary with writer, producer and director James B. Harris. And a trailer does have one of the best endings of all time. One of my favourite black exploitations, if not my complete favourite, um, Cotton Comes to Harlem, um, based on the Chester Himes novel, directed by the wonderful Ozzy Davis. It's got a great score, um, and obviously you've got two of the, or one of the best cop duos in cinema history, um, Coffin Ed and Gravedigger Jones, um, played by Godfrey Cambridge and Raymond St. Jack. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. Calvin Lockhart as the villain. Um, it's just such a great film. But unfortunately, again, this one has no extras whatsoever. I don't think there's a Blu-ray of this by anybody else, but there really ought to be a kind of special edition somewhere with lots of extras, but the Kino has no extras, sadly. And obviously I should say all Kinos are Region A. Um, one of my favourite films of all time, but it's complete nonsense. Uh, Deep Rising, with a lovely slip cover, um, from 1998. Uh, this is, I think, the 30, not 30, um, 20 year anniversary or 25 year anniversary edition. And it has a bunch of extras. There's a commentary by Stephen Summers and the editor. Interviews with Wes Studi, Kevin O'Connell, Anthony Held. There's an interview with second unit director Dean Cundy, obviously more famous with being the DP with well, John Carpenter. Um, interview with FX people, um, SFX people, interview with the DP, there's ILM behind the scenes extras. There's a ton of extras, I just absolutely love it. This should have had 10 sequels. Um, it's just tremendous monster movie, hokum fun. Nobody agrees with me, but I don't really mind. Um, Robert Sidemack, The Devil Strikes at Night, which again, I did a video on a while ago. This has a commentary by Imogen Sarah Smith. You know, some of the older Kino Lorbers had this kind of white border around them. Um, this is a fantastic film about a German serial killer during World War II. Um, Dog Day, 
with Lee Marvin. Um, again, it's a French film commentary with Howard Berg and Steve Mitchell, and this includes both the English and the French audio. Um, directed by Yves Bosset. Doesn't quite work, but is fascinating nonetheless. Uh, Easy Living. Ray Milan, Gino Arthur and Edward Arnold. Um, written by Preston Sturgis. Just absolutely wonderful. Um, I did a double take video with this and another Kino that's in my collection, both written by Preston Sturgis rather than directed by him. Um, this has a commentary by Kat Ellinger, who's always fantastic, and this is from 1937. John Berman's The Emerald Forest from 1985, which seems to be more and more relevant as the years go by. And unfortunately, this is another example of a Kino with absolutely no extras. Um, because I like film noir, I have made the daft decision to try and get all the film noir sets. So this is film noir set one, which had five films. Most of our sets just have three. So this has Storm Fear, Big House USA, Witness to Murder, um, A Bullet for Joey, and He Ran All the Way. So that's volume one. Um, I have volume three which is Abandoned, The Sleeping City, The Lady Gambles. Now obviously some of these have some crossover with the Indicator um, noir sets, but I don't really mind because I love me some noir. I'm future proofing in case I wear one of them out. <clears throat> um, this is set four, which has Calcutta, Six Bridges to Cross and An Act of Murder. Um, and set 11. I'm just getting them when I can find them at a decent price. Um, this has a woman's vengeance. I was a shoplifter um, and behind the high wall. So that's set 11, so hopefully I will be... I think set 6 is maybe in the post somewhere. Then we have Finders Keepers, a really fun kind of ignored and forgotten Richard Lester film from 1984. Um, again, no extras in this one, but the film is just kind of daft, but kind of works. But you might watch it and think that's terrible. And that's fair enough. Um, another Yves Boisset film, um, The French Conspiracy, was only a train young. Michelle Piccoli, Jean Seberg, Gianmaria Maria Volonte, uh, Michelle Bouquet, Bruno Kremer, Philip Noiré and Roy Scheider. I mean, it's quite a cast. Um, I could have did a video on this as well. Um, it might not kind of hang together the way it should, but there's so much good stuff in it and just an amazing cast. This is from 1972. Then we have The Good Fairy. This was the other film with Easy Living that was written um, by Preston Sturgis. This is Margaret Sullivan and Herbert Marshall. Again, what more do you need? Then we have The Great Scout and Cat House Thursday. Yes, this is a real film with that title. Um, Oliver Reed is a Native American. Um, you've also got Robert Culp and Lee Marvin, Struther Martin, Sylvia Miles. This is just an absolute riot. Sadly, no extras in this one either, but the film itself couldn't make now, but just an absolute blast. Hangover Square, um, which is just amazing. The wonderful Laird Krieger and George Sanders. Um, about a composer who has blackouts and bad things happen. This has got two commentaries. Um, one by film historian Steve Haberman and actor Faye Marlowe. Commentary by film historian Richard Sheckle. Um, the Tragic Mask, it's got a Laird Krieger story featurette, um, a trailer, and it's got the radio um, version performed by Vincent Price. Berman's Hell in the Pacific with Lee Marvin and Toshiro Mifune. And this has got an interview with John Berman, an interview with the art director, commentary with Travis Crawford and Bill Ackerman, an alternate ending, and the trailer. For the wonderful Hell in the Pacific. Two legends of the game. 
um, Ida Lupino's Hitchhiker, um, which is a lovely little film. Again, this is one of the older Kinos with the white background. This is from 1953. It's only 71 minutes, but it moves like a car being driven by two people that are held up by gunpoint from a hitchhiker. Um, the special features, just an image gallery. Um, so not great special features, but a wonderful little film. How I Won the War, I think this was perhaps the first Kino I bought when I got a region free um, machine. Richard Lester's masterpiece, my favourite Richard Lester film. Unfortunately this is just two trailers from Hell, um, one with Alan Arkush and one with John Landis and a Richard Lester trailer gallery. But blimey I love this film. I love this film too, um, Illustrious Corpses, again I've said it 28 million times in this channel, one of the best film titles or a title of any kind of art, Illustrious Corpses, wonderful, um, by Francesco Rossi, Lino Ventura, is in it, Max von Sydow is in it, um, about a bunch of judges that get killed and Lino Ventura investigates, just absolutely fantastic from 1976. And one of the other reasons I would urge you to pick this up if you are multi-region is it's got a commentary by Alex Cox, which is so knowledgeable, funny and wonderful, as you'd expect from Mr Cox. Um, another Billy Wilder, Armilla Douche. Again, this is available in Eureka in the UK. Again, another one based on the play, um, but way too long at 143 minutes. But Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine are wonderful. There's a commentary by Joseph McBride, there's a commentary by Kat Ellinger and a trailer. Um, Alain Rennie's Je t'aime, Je t'aime. Time travelling fun um, and I do think perhaps an influence on some of Cronenberg's production design. I Wake Up Screaming one of my favourite film noirs, um, directed by H. Bruce Humberstone, who I believe is a real person, with a name like that. Betty Grable, Victor Mature, um, and Laird Krieger as the investigating officer of a murder. This has a commentary by Eddie Muller, um, an alternate opening title sequence, image gallery, um, and there is a deleted scene entitled Daddy. Um, Burt Lancaster, Kirk Douglas, Elizabeth Scott, I Walk Alone. I did a random review of this a few years ago um, from 1947. This is fantastic. Um, Kirk, um, Kirk Douglas is the kind of crime boss. Burt Lancaster comes out of prison after doing time for him, expecting things to be the way it used to be. But business has moved on, crime's moved on, and it's adjusting to the new world, which Burt Lancaster, Burt Lancaster struggles to do. Directed by Byron Haskin, who's an underrated filmmaker himself. Um, commentary by Troy Howarth, whose commentaries are always fantastic. Michael Mann's Jericho Mile, his TV movies. These are the kind of gems that Kino Lorber come up with. Nobody else is releasing the Jericho Mile um, about a prisoner who just likes to run. This is a commentary by Lee Gambon. And original trailer in brackets, no audio. Um, this is from 1979 and it's a wonderful, wonderful film. Brian Denny is always also in that. Um, Judgment at Nuremberg from 1961. It's whopping 186 minutes. Um, there is an In Conversation piece with Abbey Mann and Maximilian Schell, a tribute to Stanley Kramer. Kramer and the value of a single human being feature it and the trailer. Richard Lester's Juggernaut, so underrated with Richard Harris and Omar Sharif and David Hemmings and Anthony Hopkins and Ian Holm and Clifton James and Roy Kinnear. Um, unfortunately there's no extras in this but it's a Blu-ray of Juggernaut. What more do you need? 
Uh, Yorgos Lanthimos' debut, or solo debut, um, Kineta, which is just fantastic. And again, this has another commentary by Amy Simmons, who did the commentary on Alps. Vincent Price, the last man on earth. Doesn't quite work, but it's wonderful. Um, a commentary by Richard Harlan Smith. Um, it's a piece on Richard Matheson, storyteller, the trailer from Hell with Joe Dante and an alternate ending. This is from 1964. The Lodger, Now You're Talking, uh, directed by John Bram. Uh, Meryl Oberon and George Sanders is what you come for, but it's Laird Krieger that makes you stay. Um, my favourite Jack the Ripper version. This is from 1944. There's a commentary by film historian Gregory William Mank. Audio commentary by Alan Silver and James Orsini. There's a making of featurette. There's the Lodger radio version with Vincent Price. And there's a 2007 restoration comparison, an animated image montage and a trailer. I do love the Lodger. Um, Lord Love a Duck. Um, directed by George Axelrod with Roddy McDowell and Tuesday Weld. This is a very odd film. It's from 1966, which probably explains a lot. Um, to say that it's strange is probably an understatement, but it's also a lot of fun. But you can tell it's a, it was made in 1966. Love at Large by Alan Rudolph, who his films are kind of... You either love them or they hate, you hate them. Um, this is from 1990, and sadly this has no extras. Um, Francesco Rossi's Lucky Luciano with Gian Maria Volonti and Rod Steiger. Um, this has a 4K restoration, a commentary by critic Simon Abrams from 1973. Not my favourite Volonti-Rossi um, collaboration, but it has its moments, but it just doesn't really hang together that well I don't think. Um, another favourite, Carol Lombard, James Stewart made for each other which starts off as a kind of screwball comedy but quickly takes a darker turn and kind of hints at what Carol Lombard could have been if she'd survived for longer and got more dramatic roles because she's fantastic as is um, Mr Stewart. This is from 1939, this is a commentary by Lee Gambin. Ray Milland directed Western, A Man Alone, also starring Ray Milland. Um, I mean, if it wasn't for Kino Lorber, I wasn't even aware that Ray Milland directed films himself. And um, this is a commentary by historian Toby Roan. And some trailers. It's just a lovely Technicolor Western with Milland himself in the leading role. Um, Medical Mile, which is also available in Arrow, Anthony Edwards and Mary Winningham. This has got a commentary by the director. There's another commentary by the director and the DP and the production designer. Um, there's deleted scenes, outtakes and bloopers. There's a supporting cast and crew reunion. Um, there's an interview with the two stars. There's an alternate ending. Um, lots of good stuff. And an interesting little um, pre and post apocalyptic film. Um, next, Mr. Destiny. Complete nonsense, but it's a film I have a rather large soft spot for with James Belushi and Michael Caine um, and Linda Hamilton, John Lovitz, Hart Bochner from 1990. This is a commentary with James Belushi and the director James Orr and trailers. Modesty Blaze, which I just did a video on in part 16 of my Joseph Losey. This is from 1966. This has got an interview with his son, Gavrik Losey, who was the first AD. Um, an interview with screenwriter Evan Jones and the assistant art director. Commentary by David Duval and filmmaker Armand Mastriani. And an animated image gallery and a trailer gallery. Dar McGavin, The Night Stalker. Good old Kolchak stuff from 1972. This has got a commentary with Tim Lucas. A new interview with the director, John Leland Maxey. 
uh, a new interview with composer Bob Colbert and there's a Night Stalker Dan Curtis interview um, so it's lovely treatment for lovely films and then you get the Night Strangler I've got this one with the slip cover didn't get the slip cover with the Night Stalker from 1973 this is the follow up and this is a new commentary with Tim Lucas a new interview with the composer Bob Colbert which I believe is the exact same one as the other release um, there's a directing the Night Strangler featurette and this one does have a booklet as well and it's a 4k restoration and if you've got the two feature films you might as well get the whole series on blu-ray which is amazing um, I have it in DVD this is a Blu-ray with slip cover if you're that way inclined. It's from 1974 and 1975. A thousand and twenty minutes of glorious Kolchak. Um, and this has a bunch, a bunch of special features. There's an interview with David Chase, the creator of The Sopranos, who co-wrote eight Kolchak episodes. Um, there's an interview with Dana Gould, the creator of Stand Against Evil. There's an, a booklet in this one as well. And there's 21 audio commentaries for the 20 episodes. So there's one episode with two commentaries. Um, including Kim Newman, Barry Forshaw, Tim Lucas. Um, and various, various other people. Um, 14 original TV spots, newly remastered. Um, it's a wonderful set. If you love Kolchak, then these Kino Lorber releases are essential. Um, no Orchids for Miss Blandish. Yes, I have the indicator. But I just love this film so much that I decided to get the Kino as well. This one has no extras in comparison to the indicator. I would certainly recommend getting the indicator if you're multi-region. Um, but I just love this film so much. Nothing Sacred. Another Carol Lombard. C Carol Lombard? Carol Lombard. Um, if you can see a theme running through this. I do like me some Carol Lombard. This has got a commentary by William Wellman Jr. This is directed by William Wellman Sr. Um, and a theatrical trailer. This is from 1937. Vincent Price and Christopher Lee in the Oblong Box. Um, this is from 1969. This is a commentary by Steve Haberman. Um, and Edgar Allan Poe's Annabelle Lee from 1969, narrated by Vincent Price. Panic in Year Zero. This is another film starring and directed by Ray Milland. Um, and it's a wonderful post-apocalyptic film. Um, Joe Dante has a featurette called Atomic Shock. And there's a commentary by film historian Richard Harlan Smith. This is from 1962, and it's wonderful. Um, picture Mommy Dead with Don Amici and Zsa Zsa Gabor. Um, Don Amici in a slightly um, different role than he's usually in. Um, this is from 1966. It's a lot of fun. Um, there's a commentary by Howard Berger and Nathaniel Thompson and a trailer. Pitfall. A wonderful little noir with Dick Powell and Elizabeth Scott and Raymond Burr. Raymond Burr is fantastic in this. This is a commentary by Eddie Miller. This is from 1948. Planet of the Vampires by Mario Bava, um, which is absolutely gorgeous. And there's a commentary by Tim Lucas, who's a Mario Bava um, biographer and a trailer from hell with Joe Dante and the original trailer. And then we have Planet of the Vampires again. This is the new version by Kino Lorber. Um, with the slip cover and it has brand new extras. It's got 2K Master. It's got a commentary. It's still got the same commentary with Tim Lucas, but it's also got a new commentary by Kim Newman and Barry Forshaw, which is brilliant. Kim Newman actually uses the F word to describe people who don't like this, <laughs> which is wonderful. And um, there's an alternate music score there's the original Italian open credits and there's a trailer from hell with Joe Dante and Josh Olin um, and the theatrical trailer. Bava's wonderful um, space film from 
Ray Milland, Premature Burial, one of my favourite um, Ray Milland films um, from 1962, directed by um, George Corman. George Corman? Roger Corman. Um, Buried Alive, Joe Dante on Premature Burial. Um, and there's an interview with Roger Corman and the trailer from Hell with Roger Corman. Um, always loved Premature Burial. Not a big fan of actually being prematurely buried, but um, the Queen of Spades, which recently got uh, Studio Canal Vintage Classics release um, in the UK from 1949. This is a Thorold Dickinson film with the wonderful Anton Walbrook. This has got a commentary by Nick Pinkerton, an introduction by Martin Scorsese, an analysis by film critic Philip Horn, a 1951 interview with Thorold Dickinson, and a 1968 screening introduction by Thorold Dickinson. Just a beautifully shot, um, gorgeous black and white film with, of course, Anton Walbrook. What more do you need? Clive Barker's Rawhead Rex, which has rather a lot of special features. Probably more special features than you can argue than the film deserves, but that would be cynical. Um, so it's got commentaries, it's got interviews, interviews with SFX. Um, and there is a booklet with this one, and Kat Ellinger does a um, essay in the booklet. Um, sadly, there's no Clive Barker in the extras. The Return of the Musketeers from 1989, Richard Lester's final um, film, which is obviously overshadowed by the tragic death of Roy Kinnear during filming. Sacco and Vansetti, um, Gian Mario Volonte, in a wonderful um, Italian film based on a true story. Um, about two immigrants that get um, framed for murder which is really more a political act more than anything to do with justice um, score with Ennio Morricone with a track sung by Joan Baez or Joan Baez has covered um, sorry it is sung by Joan Baez um, that will bring a tear to a glass eye this also has a commentary by Alex Cox so that's another reason to pick it up um, and it also includes the English and Italian um, audio versions and a trailer from 1971. See Volante by Volante. Um, this wonderful set of five Sergio Leone <laughs> westerns. I do have them all, obviously, in other places. Um, and I have recently picked up the Kino Lorber 4K for a few dollars more and I've ordered the Kino Lorber 4K of Good, Bad and Ugly and there's rumour that there will be a 4K of Once Upon a Time in the West which was one of the reasons for getting 4K um, in the first place. This is a wonderful set, having them all in the one place um, and also it's the theatrical cut of Good, Bad and Ugly which is the best cut in my opinion. Um, What's the cut that I've, I've seen the most? Um, so really happy to have them all in one little place, even though obviously I do have them in other places. Shake Hands with the Devil. Yes, this is J Jimmy Cagney um, as a member of the IRA. It is better than it sounds, honest. Um, this is an interview with actor Don Murray, who's in the lead in a trailer. This is from 1959. Um, it does have like Cyril Cusack in it and Niall McGuinness and Ray McAnally and Richard Harris. Um, it is a fascinating little film. It sounds terrible, but it is actually pretty good for what it is. Um, the Silent Partner, a really wonderfully odd... Um, slightly kinky film with Elliot Gould, Christopher Plummer and Susanna York from 1978. This is an interview with Elliot Gould, a commentary with Howard S. Berger, Steve Mitchell and Nathaniel Thompson, a radio spot and a theatrical trailer. I'd highly recommend it. That's from the 70s. Um, Solar Babies from 1985. Strangely enough, there's no extras in this. That's, that's an outrage. 
Oh, what's another Carol Lombard? Um, with Randolph Scott. Supernatural from 1933. It's only 64 minutes long, but it's absolutely wonderful. About possession. Um, commentary by Tim Lucas. Carol Lombard's fantastic. Not that biased. Um, Taking Care of Business, another James Belushi um, ridiculous film, but I have a soft spot for it with Charles Grodin. Remember File Faxes? That was its alternate title. File Fax, not Remember File Faxes. This is from 1990, directed by Arthur Hiller. There's a commentary by um, screenwriter Jill Mazursky, um, moderated by filmmaker Douglas Hasdale, and trailers. That's from 1998. Taken of Pelham 123, Joseph Sargent, 1974. What can you say? Apart from Kino Lorber's also got a 4K, which I'll probably fuck up. Um, this is an interview with Hector Alonso, or Elizondo even. Um, a comp an interview with composer David Shire, an interview with the editor, commentary um, by the Healy brothers. Trailer from Hell, Josh Olsen, just one of my favourite films of all time. And the other Douglas Sirk that I have, strangely enough, with Barbara Stanwyck again. Um, there's Always Tomorrow um, with Fred McMurray and Joan Bennett. Uh, this is from 1955. There's a commentary by Sam Dane and a trailer. This is probably better than the other Douglas Sirk that I've got. Sybil Danning and they're playing with fire. Um, this is from nineteen eighty four, and there's an interview with Sybil Danning. Um, this is a bizarre film, part sex comedy, part Jallo, part slasher film. Um, doesn't quite know what to be at, but it's a imposing performance by Miss Danning. Um, something completely different. Um, Claudette Colbert and the Torch Slinger. This is from 1933. This is a commentary by Kat Ellinger. And this is quite wonderful. Twice Told Tales, Vincent Price. Again, I have a Vincent Price rule. See Vincent Price by Vincent Price. Um, 1963, this is an anthology film. Um, obviously, some episodes better than others. There's an audio commentary by Richard Harlan Smith and Perry Martin, and there's a Trails from Hell with Mick Garris, and a trailer. The Undying Monster, another wonderful John Bram film, 1942. Um, this actually has a Concerto Macabre. The films of John Bram featurette. There's a commentary in um, the film historian Tom Weaver. Um, and Shumsita Bram, David Schechter and Dr. Robert J. Kiss. There's a 2007 restoration comparison and trailers. Again, only 63 minutes long, but it's another perfect example of you don't need a film to be two and a half hours. Economic. The Wild Heart with Jennifer Jones and David Farrar. But let's be honest, you're not going to watch The Wild Heart you're going to watch Gone to Earth because it includes Gone to Earth, the proper cut of Powell and Pressburger's film, not the David Oselznick butchered Wild Heart. Um, and Gone to Earth is in high definition as well, so don't worry about this being an SD extra. It's an HD. Um, and as far as I'm aware, this is the only place you can actually see Gone to Earth in high definition. Um, so The Wild Heart is like 86 minutes long and Gone to Earth is obviously somewhat longer. Um, again, it's one of those Pell and Pressburger films that is viewed as a failure, but if you actually watch it, you go, blimey, that's quite excellent. Um, and this is two commentaries. Um, Troy Howarth does The Wild Heart and Sam Dane does Gone to Earth and there's Jennifer Jones trailers. It's from 1952, even though Gone to Earth from 1950. Witness to Murder, which yes, is in one of the film noir box sets, but I had this um, first because, again, 
See Barbara Stanwyck by Barbara Stanwyck. See George Sanders by George Sanders. Um, this is from 1954. Sadly, no extras. But when you've got Barbara Stanwyck and you've got George Sanders, do you really need extras? And then finally, um, something different. Young Ahmed, the Dardenne's last film, even though they do have a new film that's coming to physical media at some point, which I wasn't even aware of. Um, which is good because Young Ahmed's probably their most disappointing um, film. This one has an interview with the two twins, and if you've ever seen their interviews, they're a couple of odd Belgians. Um, and again, this is another example of the modern Kino Lorber not sticking with a good old fashioned um, black back, but white back. Oh, unbelievable. Um, Yeah, I'm just looking to see when this actually was. 2019 or something like that? I guess maybe a little bit older than that. I can't actually remember um, when they made this, but they do have another one out. Um, so on that bombshell, the Dardens have got another film out. Um, thanks very much for watching. This is my Kino Lorber collection, which I think is a bit bigger since the last time I did a Kino Lorber collection. And it will always grow because there's always these little films that you see when you're trawling through eBay in the middle of the night that you go, oh, that sounds quite interesting. Um, nobody else has released that. Um, but please let me know in the comments what your favourite Kino Lorber release is, what you think of Kino Lorber in general, um, and how much money you would spend in a Kino Lorber sale. I know for me, as I said, if they shipped internationally, I would probably empty my bank account. Um, so thanks very much for watching. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying farewell.